Talk to me about what the history of this location is, what people that have never been to the LBJ Ranch, give, sure. give us a quick overview of the history. So we're settled in uh, Texas Hill Country, which is um, really a German part of Texas. Uh, a lot of Eastern Europeans moved here, and uh, President Johnson was born here on the property we're standing on. Uh, about a mile from here is his birthplace. And uh, 1951, he moved back here as an adult and uh, traded a house with his aunt, Frank, to um, start his, what we now know as the LBJ Ranch. So he reacquired his parents' property, his grandparents' property, and then kept expanding it. But this is where President Johnson lived and, and raised his, his Herefords. That was all over TV in the 1960s. So There was a purpose that he specifically wanted to start the, the herd. Why? Right. Uh, he was a master politician, so uh, I think in 1957 he bought his first registered Herefords, and I, I really believe that was to improve that political image, make him the gentleman rancher, the businessman, and get away from that image of being a small town, maybe a southern politician. When you consider the politics of the 1950s and 60s, he's, he's really cultivating this image to his benefit. A lot of people may not realize how he financed this. It was actually Lady Bird that played a big role in that. It was. She was quite the entrepreneur. Uh, in the early 1940s, she, she took some inheritance money from her, from, uh, her father and bought a radio station here in Austin and was able to turn that around and, and buy more radio stations and eventually would make a multi-million dollar communications business and that really helped fund this ranch initially. So. Give us the experience of how the Johnsons turned this over to the National Park Service. Why and when did that happen? Right, uh, so this national park is the most complete presidential site we have in our nation. Uh, we have where a president's born, where he lived while in office, and then where he uh, retired to out of office, and also where he's buried. So in 1969, he moved back to the ranch, moves home, and uh, they start working on plans for this to become a national park. 1972, it becomes a national park. And uh, he donated about 680 acres of his 4,000 acre ranch. And he also donated a portion of his herd. He wanted it to remain a working ranch. Uh, without the cattle, we have a beautiful park. With the cattle, we have the ranch setting. So. The operational portion of the working cattle, who does that now? How does that happen? So the National Park Service actually runs the cattle operation. We own the cattle themselves. Um, LBJ's ranch foreman, who had been here since 1961, when it became a national park, he basically became a park ranger and kept on with his job, but he's the initial ranch manager. Uh, and like I say, today I work for the National Park Service. LBJ had a really unique way of branding his cows. Talk to us about that, why he did it. So President Johnson chose to brand on the horns instead of the hide, and uh, mainly because he was raising show cattle, he wanted to be known for his herd bulls, and he, they really felt that that horn branding kept a clean look on their body. It, uh, it's obviously painless for the cattle, but it really stands out. It gets your attention right away. And if you know anything about President Johnson, uh, he was a showman. He wanted to give people a good show, and that, that horn branding really stands out and gets, gets attention. Clint, thanks so much for having us Absolutely. out here. We appreciate it. Tell, now, for folks that want to find out more, if they want to know more about the ranch, what do they need to do? Sure, we've got a website for the National Park Service. If they go to nps.gov, and then uh, they can look for Lyndon B. Johnson National Historical Park. That's awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Come back to see us.